Live from Channel 7, it's your favorite news anchor. Constantine. Now, for those of you just tuning in, we have here in studio Constantine Stanlavsky, who was one of the most influential uh, people who ever worked in the field theater. He's had every theater job, um, you know, he's been the actor, he's been the director, he's owned his own theater, uh, he's been a playwright, but that's not really what his legacy is about. He, you've been a theorist. Now that what's, that's, that's what makes you a little bit different from, you know, your average run-in-the-mill, you know, director. Um, and with all this, I got, I got one question. <laughs> when did you have time to sleep? <laughs> Yes, yes, I do know about how I revolutionized the, uh, the acting industry as how we know it. And I, uh, I really use these, these different techniques in order to emphasize me points. And I, I revolutionized the way that an actor prepares for a scene, in which the process that makes them, them better at their job. Um, it's, it's nothing more than being an actor is what I believe. I believe that an actor really is, he is his own boss and he, he really he captures his own scene. But you say that so casually, like you, I mean, did you just wake up one day and say, you know, everyone's acting wrong, everyone's, you know, they're not, they're not pulling it from the right spot. It's hard to wake up, not, you know, not many people wake up and decide they want to completely change how something has been done and thought of for, you know, as long as recorded history is known. So, I mean, what was, what was kind of going through your mind? Who? It was not that I thought, oh, you know, I have the right answer. But at the time, the director tells you have to be one with the character. You leave all personal emotions behind. You transform and this is how I was taught. In this scenario, you are making up feelings for someone else. I go, I go, as you say, instead of forgiving your emotions, thrive on them. Thrive on them and, and use them. Your, your emotions are so powerful. And when you engulf yourself in, in your emotions, in, say your past experiences, dramatic moments, you then pick the right memory or emotion to best portray your character's emotion. And that, that is realism. That, that is not easily active. There are no substitutes for real thing. And that was the basic principle in much of my teachings and what I call the method. Right. And you mentioned earlier that this was actually, you referred to this as internal acting. And the basic idea for those of us uh, just joining or may not understand the jargon as much, instead of becoming a character when acting, you know, because you can only pretend to a certain extent, you kind of engulf yourself in emotions and experiences personal your own emotions and your own memories and experiences uh, which I guess creates more of a realistic and believable actor you know is that the, is that the basic idea of how uh, did you know it was gonna be accepted I mean did you think it was gonna be accepted let me hear your side early on I did have a feeling that if more people were being taught this new avenue of acting that it would be a wildly accepted method but I was just one guy, you know, just one small-time guy. But this idea I had, this idea was big, and it made sense to me. Was it accepted right away? No, not really. Not a lot of my colleagues do not agree. These are new ideas, and that is threatening to someone else's old ideas. This is a principle that we've been dealing with in society for as long, as long as my memory will take me. Um, over time, ideas that I've become comfortable with, people will naturally change, and, and they will stop opposing the change, and they will just accept these things. That's that's absolutely incredible. You know, that's that's actually happened a lot through history. We notice that when we look back into history, it's the innovators and the philosophers and the free thinkers, you know, maybe the people who are thinking outside of the box because they're a little bit ahead of their time, that are ridiculed and, you know, almost outcasted in society just because the norm is broken and that's such a big thing. But it seems that the good ideas are timeless and they make it through. What, what did you do different? I am presented to a new student, I am known to say a, a very a very famous quote. Love the art in yourself, not yourself in the art. That is a reference to the process in which actors take to portray a certain emotion. You relate the situation, the feeling, the everything to yourself. Instead of trying to mimic your interpretation, you would think may say something like, or how you think your character would look, you feel it, you are it. It's you and your emotional response to a personal memory. Just having that reaction on cue, that was the idea teach people a different way to use themselves and to tap into themselves to feel a character's demands. So with this new type of thinking, it's no longer I am acting. It's I am remembering, I am feeling, I am, I become someone. It is empowering to the young. It gives them hope. They have, I have, you have, everything we need to be great actors. 
And once you get the I am, you are in another level. And eventually that idea caught on. A new idea, you know, among a younger generation I can see. I can see why it caught on because it was, you know, a great new way of thinking. But it did, it did more than that. It actually broke, it broke all the barriers. It broke language, economics, social barriers, and traveled throughout the world and to every language, to every social class. And that's something that is not an easy feat by any means. Now, why do you think, you know, what, why, how can you stay relevant for so long? I mean, this was 70 years ago and still people, you know, swear by your system. What made, what made this the one thing that everyone kind of conformed around, everyone agreed around, everyone? Well, I think a few reasons. Firstly, because theater is its own language. It is its own art form. A picture on the wall breaks the language barrier, because the beauty is the art. And not only is the art of theater breaking down the barriers, but this new idea of empowerment, because everyone has the ability. For example, I teach new student not to become character, but to intertwine himself or, with, or within another character. You will still be acting as someone else, but feeding off personal experience or memory. This became the primary focus of mine for quite some time, to bring alive a character by bringing it real, live, set-in-stone emotions and memories to portray their mood. It's the idea that this fulfills the memory, the, the function being believed by your audience. It's 100% believable because it is 100% true. Right. And you mentioned uh, off the air that you did this under a bit of scrutiny because at the time your family kind of had a lot of money and acting wasn't really a noble job. It was kind of thought of as a peasant. You know, the jester thing was still uh, very recent. And how did you break the social barrier? Because I know that that was very, um, you didn't do that back in the day. And to break it from a higher class to a lower class occupation was pretty much forbidden. So I was wondering, uh, you know, your opinion on that. What, what happened there? I mean, yes, it was a bit taboo for someone of high stature to act. Stalinsky is actually a stage name I adopted in 1884 to disassociate from my parents' name. For just that reason, I had no intentions of penetrating barriers at the time. I just wanted to act. I didn't think it was a big deal. 1884, that was the, the beginning of your career, career, correct? Excuse me. Well, I was born in 1863, so that made me about 21. So I had been acting, but it was getting serious at this point. I had not but filled with critiques of my own acting, and it was the main thing running through my mind, and acting as others, and tips and tricks, and I used this even an actor. These thousands of notes would eventually become my legacy. So those notebooks that you kept all those years, those are actually what became the infrastructure of your teachings, not only as a teacher and an actor, but as a director. Is this, is this all in the, a day in the life? Well, yes, but it never felt like I was going to change theater. In 1898, I opened the Moskva Art Theater after my youth of learning about theater. And like I said, initially, all my beliefs were not accepted. All the while, this was my first time as a director in theater. I was just trying to improvise initially and help others improve. Theater was my passion. I gave full attention and made my mission to become the best director and best director and I could be. It was at this time I really got to teaching others and the method began to spread. You know I am labeled as an actor, a playwright, director, and theorist, even an author. But these were all channels in which I deliver these ideas I have. I just love theater. I look to every single aspect which makes it up, and I feel that under many categories, I guess. You know, so I'm starting to think it was just an accumulation of just a basic desire to improve. You kind of wanted to improve something, and it benefited the entire, the entire world over. And it's, that, and it's that human drive that I think is why you became so successful and remain so relevant. Throughout Any comments? Then I opened the mosque by theater, I just personally taught people my method. And as I grew and the idea became more accepted, it started getting translated, and a demand for more guidance came. I had a heart attack, 1928, which ended many of my acting career, gave me time to focus on improving my methods. In, and in the start of my old age in which I composed that you would now refer to as the method, I combined years and years and years worth of notebooks and information and lessons into a comprehensible book. And that is when it really took off. And from your notebooks, etched in stone, for all of acting to use as a reference guide to become a little bit better. Constantine, thanks again so much for sitting down with us today. Really appreciate it. That's Constantine Stan Vlasky, everyone. Yes, it has been a very pleasure. Thank you for sitting down with me. I really appreciate it.